What's up everybody? If you're looking to buy a new 3D printer and have no idea what you're doing, you've come to the right video. This is my first 3D printer. I have zero experience. Let's see if we can get this thing running. And yes, I paid for it. Definitely not right. So I don't think our first Benchy's gonna float. Whoa, look at it clear it. it just... We pulled it out of the box and this is where we're at. It's time to start taking off this plastic and tape. And then careful with this top piece as it literally just sits on top, so don't drop it or anything. There's no hinges. And they really stuffed everything in here, so let's see if we can get this AMS out of here. All the screws were labeled nicely to show which ones you needed to take out, and it slid out pretty easy. And Jess wanted to show off her ASMR, ASMR. skills. More arrows and more screws. And this is garbage. And Jess was being the smart one and referencing the manual, and I was just yeah. over here messing things up. This goes to here. And for whatever reason, I thought this random tube went in here. It doesn't. And I had to take the whole assembly off to get it out. They do make a little wrench you can print for this, oh, but. Shit. Yeah. So we popped this off, got the tube out, and back on track. Yep. Kinda. And here I go okay, again, stripping. stripping out a screw. I'm gonna have to buy a quality set of Allen wrenches because these tiny little hex heads always kick my butt. I went to go find this easy out kit and she got it out. Honestly, this looks too big to work anyway. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. And then once you get the screen on there, it takes you through like this 15 minute ordeal of just kind of calibrating the machine and doing all that fancy stuff. And there's an update. But this is pretty cool. It's like magnetic. Okay, so... There's a bunch of stuff on here already, so I'll play with some of this and try to figure this thing out, but. This all came with the machine. Then I ordered some PLA, PLA Plus off Amazon. Um, if you guys have brand recommendations for this thing, let me know. This just had good reviews. And don't cut this bag. It's reusable, so you can store other filament inside of it. Whoa! So again, I actually don't read instructions, and it startled me a little bit. So then I did show just how this thing worked. So you push this little feed button. Then the top seal shut to keep all the moisture out. So why did I finally cave and buy this 3D printer? Well, I almost bought a Prusa a few times, but they just really didn't stand out enough for me. Like they just kind of looked like all the other machines. And then when my friends with multiple 3D printers starting selling their machines and getting these, that's kind of when it's like, okay, I really need to look into this thing because it seems pretty great. And they, they make a lot of claims with it that it's like four times faster. It has the LiDAR, so it detects errors and all that. And whether these are as good as they say, I don't know. Either way, they did an excellent job of marketing and making them appear plug and play. This is my first machine, so it's hard to really take how I feel about it into account, but as a new 3D printer owner, I'm pretty excited about it and it piqued my interest and I finally bought one. $1,500 is not cheap for a machine, and I just feel like they're really gonna propel the 3D printer industry into a new realm. And these other companies are either gonna need to come out with different features, at least adapt these features, or target a different audience because I just feel like they kinda knocked it out of the park with the whole release of it and everything. So let's see if it's actually truly plug and play and try to print something. All right, we're gonna put this thing over here because I gotta actually get some work done today. So I just did everything with the stock settings of the Benchy in here. I have no idea. So now it's just running through some calibrations and kind of figuring out what's going on. So you can see it's shooting out some filament. Oh, there it goes. I'm not sure if it has to go through this sequence every single time. So maybe you could speed that up by skipping some of this. Because once it's set, I don't know if you really got to level it every single time, but we'll find out. All right, it's doing whatever calibration going on now. It's actually spitting out some PLA. 
but it looks like it's sticking pretty good. Calibrating extrusion. So I don't know the difference between the white and the, I don't know if they're just different colors or what, but we'll find out here. Oh yes, we'll find out. Whoop. So everything appears to be going well. It's so fast and it looks really smooth. So the inside looks a little shady. I don't know if it's too hot or what, but the outside looks pretty good. Definitely not right. So I don't think our first benchy is gonna float, but whatever happened, it looks like it cleared itself up. I mean, it's obviously trash, but we'll just have to print another one. It is done. Um, it looks kind of like crap. So we'll run another one. Let's see how easy it comes off though. Oh no. All right, I couldn't switch what one it pulled from in the files in here. I'd have to use my laptop, but I switched these two around because I don't know the difference between support PLA and regular PLA. So we'll see if it works this time. So far we're looking pretty good. This one's looking way better. Look at it just bridge that gap. That's crazy. Whoa, look at it clear it. It's just like printing across the gap. That's nuts. Okay, so support PLA is used for supports, hence support PLA. It's used on supporting like advanced prints so that they print correctly and it's meant to break away easier. It probably would have worked if I'd have printed, printed it slower, but just use the green stuff. Okay, let's print this little scraper tool. And here's where I had the issue before with this uh, crappy boat here. So I used so I used the support PLA, which I assumed was wrong, but it wouldn't let me switch these in the preloaded files. So I ended up having to switch that filament itself, but I think we got it figured out now. There we go, that easy. And this is so satisfying. And this little thing actually works pretty good for scraping off all these little extrusion tests. And then I had Jess print a Benchy with the Hatchbox PLA just to see how it worked and so she could get some experience. Just lift up, yeah. Mm. Scrape them off. And remember to stay out of frame when shooting short content for IG. So now that we have a basic idea of what's going on, we'll show you guys what it takes to take a model and actually 3D print it. So first we're going to prep our plate and all you do is just add this glue stick to it and then we'll put our cool plate in the machine. It is magnetic. So here I drew this in Shaper 3D on my iPad. I'll explain what this is later, but then I'll just export this file into the bamboo slicer. And you can see here it's to take, it costs 41 cents to print these and it takes about 44 minutes. And we'll go up to here to print, select the filament I want out of the AMS, and send it to the printer. Okay, so now it popped up on the screen, and it's just going to run through its preparation sequence and print the job. And on here it says about 35 minutes in sport mode. And to save some time, I'll show you what these actually are. I printed these earlier. And this is the model we used to use that we made on the laser cutter. So these are what we call loose nuggets. They just hold our pieces off our custom racking here. But the issue with the MDF was it would soak up the oil from like cutting boards and such like that. And then when I would put something like this on it with a different type of finish, I would get little weird marks. In comes the plastic one. This won't absorb any of the finish and it should solve all my problems. 
And that's like the main reason I got a 3D printer because we can kind of just invent and come up with pretty much whatever we want. So another cool feature is it has a built-in camera and you can check the status of it with the Bamboo Handy app. It's also, it also works great for like time lapses and such, but it's great because it shows the percentage printed and I can just watch it from inside the house to make sure nothing's really going wrong. So I printed my longest carve. I printed the poop chute and it's just a piece that goes around the back and catches the little filament extracts. 10 hour carve. Ugh. It's a print, not a carve. I'm, I'm a CNC owner. I'm struggling here. Oop. Got a little bit of weirdness down here. It came off pretty easy. Pretty impressive. Only weird spot is right there. I could probably just lightly sand that out, but I don't really care. It's just a poop shoot. I'll clean all these wispies off, but... Just like that, comes out the back and then they'll collect in there. So I do have one complaint or concern. One of the major selling features of the machine was the LiDAR that it could spot when prints are failing and save you on filament. Um, I did have two prints fail. Uh, one was my fault because I just didn't realize PLA plus ran at a cooler temperature, but the print failed and the machine didn't tell me it failed. And same with the Benchy here. It did not detect or tell me that this was going haywire, which I mean, it wasn't too bad, but I assumed it would be able to know. And then I was printing some of these and because the, it was printing too hot, it failed as well. And it was, and it was just sliding these things all over the plate, but I just feel like it should have been able to tell that this isn't right. Two minor fails and it did not detect either one. So while I was printing this one, it says possible spaghetti detected. Um, so I don't know if it detected that little weird stuff going on in there or what. Otherwise it looks fine. <laughs> no, it looks like Scar. Gonna have to figure out how to fix that. All right, so after further investigation, we didn't realize right away, but when we popped it off, the bottom of it actually popped off. So what I think happened was either my filament was a touch too hot or my hot plate or cold plate was a touch too hot. So yeah, uh, he works as a knife holder. So I don't care how easy it appears or how well they do it marketing as plug and play, there's gonna be bumps in the road and you're gonna get a little frustrated at some point. I'll probably make a few tweaks and this next one will probably come out pretty dang close to perfect. No matter what, you're gonna have some sort of like research and trial and error and figuring out the right things because all these filaments may print slightly different between different brands and different filament types. So no matter what, you're gonna have a little bit of trial and error and learning with any hobby you get. So I don't care how plug and play it is, there's gonna be a few bumps along the way.